A very good day to you and welcome to the program. Snowy and I are together today. It is a beautiful spring day on the farm. If you look behind there, we've got some cattle there, some horses on this side. And those white tunnels are full of strawberries. And uh, we just thank God for today. I want to ask you a question. Have you heard from God lately? Have you heard? The Lord says, seek me and you'll find me. Let's go to Jeremiah chapter 29. And I'm reading from verse 13. And the Lord says that you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. You really need to seek him. A lot of you say, Angus, God never talks to me. God never answers my prayers. But you don't spend time searching and seeking. You've got to give the Lord time to talk to you. I want to just tell you about a couple of men that were seeking from the Lord and they found him. And God used them literally to turn the world upside down. When you search for me with all of your heart, you'll find me. That's what God says. And that's what we've got to do. We've got to do it. We've got to do it. I start off with a man by the name of, you all know him. His name is John Wesley. That's right. John Wesley, God used to probably start one of the biggest revivals that the world has ever seen. He rode his horse. I've got a horse snowy. He had a horse, maybe had a couple. He rode 225,000 miles. Folks, not kilometers. You can double that up over half a million kilometers in his lifetime. He preached 40,000 sermons. He died at 89 years old. They said he wasn't sick. He just wore out for the Lord. He spoke to huge crowds. Open air, no sound equipment, nothing. And what happened to him? Well, he got on a sailing ship. He was an Anglican priest, and he sailed all the way to America. And he preached the gospel to the um, First uh, Nation people, the Red Indians. And he had no success, absolute disaster. He got back on that sh sailing ship, and he went all the way back to England. He went to a little Bible study in a place called Aldersgate in London. And while he was sitting in that Bible study, he said, scales fell from my eyes. A warmth came over my heart. I believe that he was born again and spirit filled at the same time. And from that meeting, he went out. And as they say, the rest is history. He was seeking the Lord. And then eventually he found him. Don't give up, folks. You don't know how close you are to God using you. When Billy Graham, that dairy farmer's son, came on the scene, there was three evangelists. And uh, Billy Graham was number three in line. The other two were taking stadiums all over America. And then they decided that they would go back to university and learn a bit more about this book, the Bible. Billy Graham didn't do that. He went into a forest one night and he put this Bible on a, a stump, a tree stump. And he said, Lord, I don't know all the answers in that Bible, but I am choosing by faith to believe that this is your written word from cover to cover. And the rest is history. He's become the most famous evangelist in modern times. Charles Finney went into a forest. He was a lawyer. God used him in revival. And he was praying and the power of God came from heaven through him like a light. He said the love of God that he had never experienced before. Eventually he said to the Lord, Lord, if you don't stop, you'll kill me. Just so much love. And with that, he went out and he preached the gospel everywhere. What about David Livingston? You know that Robert Moffat, his father-in-law, came from Kuruman, a missionary station in uh, the Northern Cape. He went to Scotland to recruit more missionaries. There was nobody in the meeting, only old ladies. We love old ladies. But there was a young boy pumping the organ. He was 13 years old. Who was he? David Livingston. God used him to open up Africa for the gospel. Till next time. Goodbye.